today's project world's best teacher I'll give you a link to the, where you can find the pattern online it's free and then I will take you step by step through the project nothing difficult about it even a beginner should be able to handle this pattern calls for quarter inch material and I have some plywood on hand in that thickness but I don't like to use plywood for finished products if I can avoid it I add some four and a half inch wide one half inch thick poplar in stock and that will be perfect for this project the piece I used was about 32 inches long and I planted it down to one quarter inch thick. I'm going to use scroll saw tape, my favorite method for attaching patterns to wood. This tape is double sided and transparent enough you can see the wood grain and any defects like knots through it. You just unroll the tape and attach it to the wood then use a utility knife to cut it to width. I'll have to repeat that procedure several times for a piece this long. Once the wood is covered, I go back and use my utility knife to pry up one corner of the tape so I can remove the backing. I'll repeat the process until all the backer has been removed. You want to be a little careful applying the patterns to the tape to make sure you get the pattern in place accurately. If you goof, you can pull the pattern off and replace it, but it's very easy to tear it while doing that. Remember, the purpose of the tape is to keep the pattern from moving while you're cutting. For quarter inch thick poplar, my choice of blade is a number three Pegas modified geometry blade. This is of course a Pegas scroll saw. I've had the saw about a year now and I absolutely love it. You change blades with an upper and lower blade holder tightened only with thumb screws. I've had scroll saws require tools for blade changes and this is so much quicker and more convenient. If you're new to scroll sawing, you might want to watch my video on choosing the correct blade size for the task. I'll leave a link on the screen and in the description. I decided to start with the eraser, the smallest of the three pieces. The difficult part will be the four 90 degree corners on the inside cup. I start by cutting from the pilot hole to the nearest corner and I stop cutting as soon as the tip of the blade reaches the corner. There are two ways to proceed from here. The easiest is to back the blade up to the pilot hole, spin it around 180 degrees, and then back the dull end through the curve you just created until it reaches the point where you stopped cutting. You should be able to easily swivel the workpiece until the blade is facing the direction you want to cut next, so do that and cut along the line to the next corner. Sometimes the blade won't back up quite all the way. If so, don't worry. Just start cutting where you can, cut to the line, and follow it around. Once you've completed the cut, you can remove the waste piece and clean up the cut to any parts you weren't able to reach to before. Once you've got around to the second corner, you'll have to use the second method for corner making. Cut until you reach the corner, then stop and back the work piece up just a tiny bit so the blade is no longer cutting. The kerf the blade just created will give you enough room to swivel the work piece 90 degrees to the new direction you need to cut. Once you have the blade aligned, Put a little pressure on the workpiece to feed it into the blade once again. Every time you get to a corner, just follow the same procedure. The outside cut for the eraser shape is about as easy as it gets. I always like to start outside cuts either at a corner or an angle or when I can, and that option was available here. There were a couple of sharp turns, but they were no more difficult than the interior cuts already made. I cut all the way around the perimeter, and when I approached the 90 degree turn at the top, I just kept going to the edge of the workpiece. This way, rather than having to make a 90 degree turn, I was able to start at the edge and make a cut straight across the end. I always try to think and plan ahead to make every cut in the simplest way possible. The top half of the pencil seemed like the next logical part to cut. The pattern for this was too big to fit on one page, so I taped the back half containing the eraser to the pencil front part before I attached the pattern to the wood. As usual, I drilled pilot holes and made the interior cuts first. The detail that made this cut a little bit tricky was its length. When you're making the long cuts down the side, a good amount of the board is hanging out over the front edge of the scroll saw table. I started at the front part of the pencil and cut from the pilot hole to the nearest corner. I made the corners in the most direct manner by easing off on the blade when I reached the corner, swiveling the workpiece until it was facing in the direction I wanted to cut next, then feeding the wood into the blade once again. Those little sawtooth shapes are cut in the same manner as corners. The middle section of the pencil had two long sides. Now, the scroll saw is great for cutting curves and making sharp turns to cut angles. However, cutting long straight lines is not one of its strengths. 
You'll need to be careful to follow the line as closely as possible, and if you start to drift, work your way back. Any drifting will be more noticeable while the pattern is still in place, and likely not stand out at all once the pattern is removed. You can always go back and clean up the cut with a file or sandpaper later if need be. The long outside of the pencil can very easily be touched up if you have a belt sander or a disc sander. I have both, and I'll usually use the large disc sander to touch up edges to make sure they are straight, 90 degrees to the surfaces, and to remove any saw marks or burning. Peel this off. This stuff usually peels off in one piece. And there we got Now we got this and the extra little eraser that's going to go on top. Almost a almost a perfect match. Just a tad off, but that's okay. We can do a little sanding there. Now we're going to do the hard part. Uh, usually I do the interior first. I think that's what I'll do here. It doesn't matter what order you cut the letters in, but I usually work in the way you read them, starting at the top left, then going left to right. The same rules apply to making turns as before, but I have one practice that I do differently when I'm cutting letters. Rather than cut on the line, I try to cut the so the blade is just touching the inside of the line. This is because letters are generally spaced close together, and if you aren't careful, you can end up with the cutouts from two letters touching each other. An overlap like that will look bad at best and end up ruining a project at worst. Depending on the type of project you make most, cutting letters may or may not be a skill you need to develop. But the skills are essentially the same as you'll need for making intricate interior cuts. This is a project where the ability to quickly move the blade from one pilot hole to the next is a big factor in how long it will take to complete the project. Those changes are quick and easy on the Pega scroll saw because the arm holds in place in the upper position while you maneuver the workpiece. Then it takes just a quick turn of the wrist to tighten the blade in the upper blade holder and you're ready to start the next cut. I've got the letters cut out and it's time to make the outside cut for this layer of the sign. The point of the arrow was the logical place to start cutting, so that's what I did. Once again, there are long straight cuts, not the forte of the scroll saw. Still, this piece is going to be glued to another, and then some sanding will almost certainly be needed. I'll use the disc sander for that. I peeled off the pattern, and this time it came off nicely, except for one tiny piece in the middle of the letter D. I placed the middle layer on top, then the small top layer at one end that represents the eraser. I should have looked at the clock when I started, but I didn't. Even so, I think the cutting time was less than an hour. The next steps will be to paint those black accents on the middle layer and to paint the eraser some shade of pink. Then I'll glue the three pieces together and give the sign some sort of protective finish. This glue up is about as simple and easy as it gets. You have the bottom layer with world's best teacher cut from it, the middle layer the pencil shape with black trim, and the top layer for the eraser shape. I like to use white glue for most projects because it dries clear. I buy it in gallon jugs because it's cheaper that way, then refill small and medium-sized bottles from the gallon jug. This small bottle's tiny tip is perfect for spreading a bead of glue on small areas like the size of the pencil shape. Since the glue is water-based, I can use my finger to spread it around. I like to use spring clamps on assemblies like this. They are inexpensive, so you can have a bunch of them on hand. The other reasons I like them is that all you have to do is squeeze them open, place them where you want them, then slowly let go of the grip so the spring can do its job. I stay away from F-clamps if I can use these spring clamps, because when you tighten an F-clamp, the pad that holds down the wood turns, and that can cause one or more of the parts to move. The move may or may not be noticeable at the time, but when the glue dries, it's too late, and you're left with parts that may not align perfectly. I put a clamp on the tip of the pencil, then spread them along the sides. Since these pieces were only one quarter inch thick, I was still able to use spring clamps on the eraser section, which was a total of three quarters of an inch thick. I'll probably leave the clamps on overnight because it's getting late and I won't have time to get back to this project until tomorrow. Here's the completed World's Best Teacher sign. As I mentioned at the beginning, there was nothing difficult about it, and a beginner should be able to 
make this if they just take their time cutting the letters. I appreciate and will respond to every comment. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't already done so. This will help you by letting you know the next time I release a video and it helps me to grow the channel. If you can't wait until then, the YouTube algorithm is displaying its suggestion for another video of mine to watch, which has already been recorded and released. I'll see you there.